Six feet apart? It looks like six feet to me. We're good. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Mario Ramirez, and I'm a pianist and teaching artist with the San Diego Opera. Hey, guys. My name is Humberto Borboa, and I'm a singer and also a teaching artist for San Diego Opera. And thanks to San Diego Opera's Words and Music program, we get to continue our teaching by creating some video content for you students. Throughout these videos, we're going to learn some musical concepts as well as some music history. Hope you enjoy. So to get us started, I want to teach you guys some vocabulary words that are really important to our musical understanding. If we look over here, we have five words listed. We have staff, treble clef, bass clef, measure, bar line, and double bar line. These words are all represented on this picture directly to its right, and I'm actually going to recreate the picture here below and tell you exactly which one of the words is which part of the picture. So let's get started. The first word is staff. A staff has five lines and four spaces. It looks something like this. These are really important when it comes to reading music because each one of these lines or spaces correlates to a different note that will either be playing or singing. We have five lines and four spaces. We usually have two staffs written on top of one another. One belongs to the treble clef, which is what I've drawn here. Another name for this treble clef is also the G clef. And that's because this treble clef starts or is centered around the second line. And we often know that second line on the treble clef to be known as the G line. We'll talk a little bit more about this later on when we actually start putting notes up on the board. But this treble clef, which is our second term, is also known as the G clef. I'm going to go ahead and erase our treble clef so that we can add our bass clef. We can still use the same amount of lines and spaces for the bass clef. It's still our five lines and four spaces. For the bass clef, we're going to start on the fourth line and we're going to draw a head here and we're going to loop around like this and then draw two dots on each side of that fourth line. The bass clef nickname is actually the F clef. And the reason for that is because this second line on the bass clef is known as the F line. Again, we'll come back to this when we start talking about actually placing notes on the staff. But for now, we have the two staffs, which together we have the grand staff, we have the treble clef, and the bass clef so far. Next up, we're going to define measure, bar line, and double bar line. Music is divided up into sections called measures, and to divide these sections, we use a symbol called a bar line. Bar lines are used to divide measures. So here we have a treble clef staff example, which has already been divided up using three bar lines and one double bar line at the end. All a double bar line means is the end of a piece. So we have one, two, three bar lines and a double bar line which gives us one, two, three, four sections of music or measures. These are some of your general vocabulary words that we'll use to get going with our musical concepts. Next we're going to teach you a little bit about the different kinds of notes that we have in music. Each note has a certain value or a certain length for which we hold that note. Let's start off with the whole note. A whole note is represented by a simple circle that is left with a space in the middle. This whole note can be drawn as a space, or it can also be drawn as a line note. A whole note receives four beats. So in order to clap that whole note so that we make sure we get all four beats, we're going to learn a very specific kind of whole note clap, and it goes something like this. Hold that whole note. If you notice, there are four motions that go with the whole note, one for each beat. Once again, hold that whole note. Moving on, the next note is the half note. A half note looks similar, like a whole, similar to a whole note, for the exception that it has a stem coming either up or down from either side of it. A half note receives half of what a whole note would get, so half of four is two. Therefore, the half note gets two beats. So in order to clap a half note, we would count half note, 
two motions, one for each beat. Last but not least, we have the quarter note. The quarter note is similar to a half note, except it's all filled in, and also receives a stem on either the left side going down or the right side going up. A quarter note only gets one beat. So for a quarter note, we would just count the one clap, quarter. Each of these types of notes has a rest that also goes along with it. In music, the term rest literally means to be quiet. So a whole rest looks a little bit like this. It's a line with a box coming out of the center of it. And that is also filled in. Just like a whole note, a whole rest gets four beats. What's very important about rests is we can't make a sound. So unlike a whole note where we clap and hold that whole note, for a rest, we're just gonna go hold that whole rest. This is how we demonstrate a rest, or in other words, a silent clap. For a half rest, it's very similar to a whole rest, except it's just flipped upside down. So a half rest actually looks kind of like a hat. That's what I tell my students in order to remember that. So a half rest, just like a half note, gets two beats. So we would just feel those two beats as a rest. Let's try a half rest together. Just half rest. Again, we're not clapping because on a rest we don't make a sound. Last but not least, we have probably the funniest looking rest of the group, the quarter rest. A quarter rest looks something like this. The quarter rest, it's kind of like a squiggly line like that with a little tummy going to the left and that gets one beat, just like a quarter note. So for a quarter rest, we would just feel the word rest. So let's review the three kinds of rest that we've learned. We learned hold that whole rest for four beats. We learned half rest for two beats, and we learn the quarter rest for one beat. Now we'd like to try and put together some of the words and terms that we've been discussing. On our whiteboard, we have notes with different note values, as well as, as, well as bar lines depicting different measures. If you notice, the first and the third measure both just have one whole note, so we'll be clapping these exactly the same. You want to demonstrate how we're going to clap the whole note, Mr. Mirto? I would love to, Mr. Mario. So the first and the third bar is a whole note. If you remember, we go hold that whole note and we have a four motion movement. Hold that whole note. Perfect. The second bar is a little bit different. If you notice, we have two quarter notes followed by one half note. Each of these will get a certain beat. The first two quarter notes will get the first two beats and the half note will get the last two beats. So we're gonna make sure we hold that half note during the fourth beat and we don't clap again for that fourth beat. So that measure would look something like this. Quarter, quarter, half, note. Notice that we made a motion on the fourth beat, but we didn't make an actual sound on the fourth beat since it's part of the, of the half note. All together, this example would be one, two, ready, go. Hold that whole note. Quarter, quarter, half note. Hold that whole note. What about if we do it one more time? Try this at home, make sure you don't Hit the computer or your keyboard, get some space, and here we go. One, two, three, and go. Hold that whole note. Quarter, quarter, half note. Hold that whole note. Excellent. Looks good to me. Awesome. And we're back. Are we six feet apart, Mr. Mario? Still looks good to me. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we reviewed a lot of vocabulary words today, so in order to make sure that we got a hang of all of them, me and Mr. Umberto have prepared a little quiz for all of you. You ready, Mr. Umberto? I am. Let's go. Awesome. Question number one. Music is written on what? Music is written on a staff. Very good. And how many lines and spaces does a staff have? That's a good question, Mr. Mario. It has five lines and four spaces. Terrific. Now, let me ask you, Mr. Mario, what's the nickname for the treble and the bass clef? Oh, for both of them? Hmm. Well, I know the treble clef is called the G clef, and the bass clef, I think, is called the F clef? You're right. Awesome. Great. Uh, how about what do we use to divide measures? 
to divide the measures in staff, we use bar lines. Excellent. But do you know what type of bar line goes at the end of a song? Oh, that's easy, Mr. Mario. We know it's the end of a song when we have a double bar line. Wow, someone was paying attention. <laughs> I was behind the camera. <laughs> um, last question, let's review our notes, the three different kinds of notes that we learned and how many beats they each get. All right. Um, a whole note gets how many beats? Gets four beats. Very what good. about a half note? Well, half of four would be two, so half note gets two beats. Two beats. And a quarter note? Just gets one beat. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think we did a great job for our first lesson, and we're looking forward to discussing more musical concepts with everyone. Hey, guys. So we're back. And just so you know, at the end of every lesson, we're going to give you a few basic examples, and we're going to teach you how to sing and properly use your voice. But for now, just because we gave you so much vocabulary and so many musical concepts that you got to learn, Mr. Mario and I are going to sing a song for you from Argentina. And this is called Alfonsina y el Mar by composer Ariel Ramirez. Oh, <laughs> 